Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about object-oriented programming and if there is a bit of a backlash or a prejudice against it in the industry today. So let's get into it. Well, uh, I would say that this is a pretty good question and it is, it, it, to a point it is kind of true, but I wouldn't go as far as to say that there is a, well, some people have a prejudice against it, but it's a similar sort of issue as to people having opinions about tooling and preferences and approaches and things of this nature. It's not something that is universally true, but it is something that may be fairly present. There are a fairly substantial amount of people who are very overt about how they feel about object-oriented programming and usually these are the people that you will then find claiming that things such as functional programming is superior and th stuff like that basically. And honestly guys, all of this comes down to one fundamental thing and that is that none of them have any proof whatsoever that one approach is better than the other and they simply have a preference. They want to push their preferences. It's, uh, it is as pointless a discussion as which football team is the best or which web framework is the best. It's just a, the people who argue about this stuff, guys, are the people who are either academics or evangelists or convinced that one approach is better than the other and we come back to this damn thing every single time and you know what the big dirty secret is both of these approaches can be used to great success and they are by a lot of companies in fact the backlash against object oriented programming is not against the approach itself if you ask me it has more to do with the limitations of the approach and the areas of which we have a problem keeping things consistent and keeping things scalable because there are problems with object oriented programming that can go can get quite quickly out of hand if you don't know what you're doing. But the same is true for functional and it's actually even more true than you might think because the thing that the functional people will not tell you or the people who pr promote functional programming will, won't tell you is that almost nobody in the industry uses it to uh, like a, as a purist approach. There are quite a lot of companies who have the mindset that we're going to go with an object oriented approach. And that's just not true for functional. It's much more common that object-oriented programming is part of your everyday life than pure like functional programming is. There are practices within each that you will find in code bases. There are, there are you would have to look fairly, fairly, well, you would have to look for a company where somebody's going to have a purist opinion about which approach to go. Usually these are in the, the that sort of opinion is in the minds of some very opinionated te tech lead or team, team lead or something like that. But most people, they just get on with it. They just solve the problem in the most efficient way that they know of. And so this issue that people, quite a lot of people have with object oriented programming is, as I said, it's more about the things that aren't working in object-oriented programming. But if you think about that just from a logical perspective, even functional programming, imperative programming, or the procedural programming, like call it whatever, whatever paradigm you want to use has a limitation, depending on what you look at. Every single approach in the world has a limitation. Every single thing you can think about has a limitation. That doesn't mean that that approach is bad. It is about you figuring out how to work within the confines or like the restrictions that that approach brings with it and understanding the dangers and understanding the things that you need to do in order to mitigate some of that and some of those issues. And that's the thing that keeps on being underestimated. You see people have this almost binary way of thinking that especially when I see people talk about these two paradigms against each other and it's the same thing on the other perspective like the functional people get a lot of 
like hatred from like some of the most uh, opinionated people in object-oriented programming because of the limitations of functional programming. And it's like, as I said, it's, it's, a, you, it's a different, uh, they're arguing different things. One, pro, one is saying that, oh, these things are really good with this approach and are bad with the other. And the other one turns it around and says, the, like the reverse, and say it's the exact same back. They're just mirroring each other's arguments. And the thing is that, this, they seem to forget that both of them have been able to produce good consistent results with their approach. And that's the thing. If you understand which, uh, like both of these approaches and you know what to think about and you know how to implement things correctly in these, with these practices, you never really have an issue. And that's the whole, the big lie about this. Functional programming is right now fairly popular on the trend scale because, hey guys, Programmers are just like anybody else. They get bored with uh, the everyday boring stuff. And so people start promoting things that are, well, that are a little bit out there or a little bit more fun to work with than something else. And functional programming is right now seeing a rise in trends. And in a little while, we're going to see, like, in the, this, this is what happens, guys. It comes and goes. Functional programming has not broken into mainstream programming as the dominant paradigm for over 30, it's almost 40 years now. Why do you think that it's like, as I said, it is a trend technology or it's a trend approach. It's something that some people will push religiously, but the, where the bulk of the people working in the industry don't really care so much about it because well, we can talk about why people don't adopt it in the same, in the way that some people think that they should. But the long and short of it is, guys, that there are quite a lot of people who think, think that object-oriented programming is a bad approach. But I will tell you right now that it's still the base, like the default, you are expected to know object-oriented programming. You are not expected for the most part to know functional programming. So there you are. And this is, this is you know, I. I, pref I have situations where I like functional programming and I have situations where I like object-oriented programming. I'm one of those weird people who allow the situation to dictate which is a good approach. And I try to solve it in the most efficient manner because usually there's a, there's, the problem usually has a very good fit for a with a specific solution. And then I will pick that solution. I don't give a fuck if uh, people think functional programming is better than object-oriented programming because when you know both, it's a very easy pick to decide which to pick based on the based on the problem at hand. So what I want you to take away from this is that there is absolutely a fairly good amount of people who will like back talk or like, put object oriented programming down. And to an extent it is for good reasons, because there are limitations within object-oriented programming that makes it very hard to maintain an object-oriented pro pro object code base. But as I said, the same is true for functional. There's no magic about functional programming that just magically makes a code base much better. It's just a different set of benefits and problems. And you are the one who's deciding. It's a subjective thing. You decide which set up benefits and problems that you want because it's very it's proven beyond the shadow of a doubt that both of these approaches have the potential to create really really powerful large applications because as i said if there are more companies today that use object-oriented programming than functional programming and nobody's been able to prove that by just making something functional it's going to perform better than an object-oriented approach so the discussion is very subjective. And maybe you want to join into those discussions, but arguing about this stuff, I find this very, it's almost pointless because it's not gonna lead anywhere, I'm sorry to say. Have a great day.